Hi everybody, welcome to Go Big Bore or Go Home, where recoil is required because we are the house of the rising gun. Today we're doing our Versus series where we take two or more calibers, put them together, run them through a series of tests, see who comes out on top. And I am doing one that I've wanted to do a long, long time. I am doing the 357 Smith & Wesson Magnum versus the 10mm Auto. But Sean, I hear you say, why would we do the 357 Magnum on a, on a channel about big bores? Well, it's because of two reasons. One, I kind of consider this to be an honorary big bore. It's a really powerful cartridge, and it's also really popular. People love it. And two, I've had some uh, disputes about whether the 10 millimeter is better than the 357 Magnum, or even equal. So today we're going to find out by instead of just making conjecture, let's see what the test results say. Now granted, we're not a lab, so take it all with a grain of salt. It's just for fun and entertainment, but uh, it'll be a good time. I initially intended this to be just one long video, but it became too long in editing, so I split it up into part one and part two. And that doesn't mean there won't be a part three. But today what we're going to do is test jacketed hollow points against a couple of different forms of media to see how they do. And without any further ado, on with the show. Before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know something important. Normally, I like to provide you guys with the performance of the ammunition from the ammunition manufacturer, as well as chronograph data that I've collected myself. And I also want to do that with the guns that are in the video. However, for the video, I forgot to bring up my chronograph that day, and the 357 Magnum revolver we used belonged to my brother Steve. So we were going to do chronograph data with it later, but he sold that gun before we got the opportunity. I went ahead and took out my Taurus tracker here, which is a 6.5 inch barrel versus a 5 inch barrel and I got some velocities over a chronograph that way. I still wanted to provide something of a real-world expectation for this ammunition from a real revolver, just I couldn't do it with the revolver that's in the video. I put an asterisk by the velocities in the video so you can keep this in mind as you're watching. Next time, I'll make sure we get the velocities done right then and there. Okay, so we're out here to actually do the shooting. Uh, like we said in our intro, uh, it's me and Steve. We're going to be doing shooting uh, for 357 versus 10 millimeter. Steve is going to start with the 357 Magnum, and I'll have him go over the ammo he's going to use. I'm Steve with Go Big Bore or Go Home. I'm going to be shooting a mid bore today, a GP100 357 Magnum with a 5 inch barrel. First, we're going to start with 125 grain XTPs at 1600 feet per second. Okay, so our first shot went out the top of the block, so Steve's going to take a second shot with those 125s. Uh, looking at the block, this was the one that came out through the top, left a few ones. Uh, Steve's second one, actually, the wound channel is almost right underneath it. Steve's second shot hit right here. That's Steve's second shot. And it looks... It's a little tough to see because this is brand new gel, so I got that. It looks like it stopped right in between the two blocks. I'm going to roll it over and see what happens. Oh, there it is. Hmm. How do you like that? Still a little warm, not bad. But, um, yeah, it came right out there. So, the 125 grains did... 16 inches of penetration. Now we'll move on to the 158s. Now we'll be shooting the 158 grade XTPs at about 1400 feet per second. Same firearm, GP100, 5 inch barrel. So the 158 grain actually went if we take a look at the front here, this is the 125 grain that we just did. This is the one that went out the top. There's our 158 grain. And if you can see the wound channel, it's right over it. It's really tough to distinguish, but they didn't cross, so it's a good shot on Steve's part. Comes all the way through here, and it kept going. And look at that, came close, but it did not come out the top. We're grabbing the tape measure right now so we can do a test on the penetration. All right, so looks like we did about, the wound channel ends about right here, so it's about 23 and a quarter inches. 
or where the bullet stopped at about 22, but it looks like it actually went to 23 and a quarter. And as speculated before, the other, the 125 grain went to 16 inches. Okay, so I got 180 grain XTPs in my 10 millimeter. Firearm we're using today is a Glock 20 Gen 4. I am using a KKM barrel, but it is the standard 4.6 inch length. Uh, I just find it's a little bit better with lead rounds, so when we get to that portion of the test, much easier to just stick with a barrel that's consistent. So here we go. Okay, so I believe this is the 10 millimeter. I'm gonna go this side. So you can see um, the wound channel. I, I apologize, guys. Next time we do one of these, we're gonna have a better set of gel, but it came right through here and stopped just past the block. Looks like we're just about 17 inches uh, from the top. That's a nice clear picture of the bullet right there. It clearly expanded very nicely. And again, you know, just kind of tilting, you can see we've kind of stacked our wound channels. Um, I'm going to see about later. Maybe we can give you guys a clearer picture. But uh, let me try and flop it over a little bit. Uh, so this one here, I believe, is our 10 millimeter. As it came up here, exited out here, and went right in there. All right, so tape measure to looks like it stopped at about 17 and 3 eighths. All right. All right, so now we've got the 200 grain XTP 10 millimeter, same firearm. Let's see how we can do on penetration for this one. Okay, so we got a good shot, but I forgot to turn on the camera. So for the point of the video, we're gonna do this one more time. 200 grain XTP from Underwood, 10 millimeter. Here we go. Okay, so testing out two shots, almost identical places. You can see here's the first round, here's the second round. Um, looking at that, looks like the first one got to about 18 and a half, maybe a little more. And the second one got to about 18 and three quarters. So for those who don't remember, there's the 357, 158 grain at just a 23 and a quarter with a bullet lodged at 22. So when it comes to penetration, I gotta be honest, looks like the 357 gets the nod. I'm gonna take a look at the wound channels here in a second. Okay, so both of them came here. You can see the wound channels there. There's one bullet and the other one's just behind it. There's where they landed. For the last test, we are shooting into bottles of seltzer water. This is a 357 Magnum, 125 grain load, about 1,600 feet per second, Underwood XTP bullet. All right, so there's one, two, uh, three, and over here, number four. This one got penetrated. Oh, looks like it just got skimmed. Oh, well. All right, so we'll try again here in a second. So Steve informed me, ah, and he's right, the bullet actually didn't skim off. It, it hit number four, and... Uh, it's in there. So let's, uh, there it is. A 125 grain jacketed hollow point.
Good expansion. We're shooting 158 grain XTPs, and these are underwood. They're traveling about 1,400 feet per second. Woo! There we go. So we got one, two, three. Oh, that's. Yeah, it's dead. And it went into number four. And once again, we've captured the bullet. This is cool. There it is. Our 158 grain slug. Check that out. Oh, now the 10 millimeters got to, uh, got to do better than the four, I guess. So now the uh, 10 millimeters is going to take a shot at the two liters. Uh, I've got 180 grains going 1,300 feet per second. It is an XDP hollow point, just like what we put into the ballistics gel. All right, so there's one, two, three, four. So again, that's one, two, three, there's four. And I don't think we caught the bullet. I think it went off in a different direction. So that's four. And not too bad. Okay, so last one, it's the 200 grain uh, XTP going at about 1200, 1250. And uh, we're gonna give it a shot here. So in inspecting the damage, here's the first one we hit. And I actually, <laughs> the 10 millimeter actually decapped the bottle. Uh, second one, also just totally mangled. Uh, third one, there it is. And then the fourth one here, uh, it went in and out. And unfortunately we did not capture the bullet. So, uh, unlike the 357s, uh, I think that Steve's a little better shooter than me. I think he was able to keep the gun a little straighter. Okay, so here's the bullets we pulled out of the ballistics gel in this uh, test today in our Versus series. We have the 357 Magnum 125 grain bullet, and we have the 158 grain bullet. We have the 180 grain bullet, and that's from the 10 millimeter. And we have the two 200 grain bullets from the 10 millimeter. So let's take a closer look. Now, the 125 grain bullet here expanded really well to 0.452 inches and retained 114.9 grains out of 125 grains. So very impressive. The 158 grain, it retained 139.1 grains and expanded to 0.514 inches. So again, really good expansion, really great, really great uh, weight retention, which definitely is what gave it the performance it did in that ballistics gel. Now looking at the 10 millimeter, I think this is a bit of a fluke, but if you can see, there's a big chunk of lead here. I'm gonna wait till the camera focuses. There you go. It's a big chunk of lead that just kind of broke off there. And the 180 grain lost a lot of weight, and I think that's a big chunk of it because it's down to 134.7 grains. So really a lot of weight loss on that. And it expanded to 0.638 inches. So again, a great expansion, just a little bummer that it lost so much of its weight. Now on the two 200 grain bullets, I think you guys remember we, were, we, we, were, uh, we did two of them because one of them I didn't film right. These two were really good at what they did. They expanded to 0.64 inches on one and 0.656 on the other, and the weight retention was spot on. One weighed in at 200.9 grains, and one weighed in at 200.4 grains. So, not bad at all. Well, that wraps it up for today, guys. I thought it was a really interesting test. What we saw was round one going to the 357, round two going to the 10 millimeter, which puts us kind of at a draw. But 
We will see what happens in round two when we put hard cast bullets up against the tests. And I think it's going to be fun. I think you guys will really like it. If you stuck with us for this long and uh, didn't have a good time, I just want to say thanks for giving us a shot. I really appreciate you guys watching. And if you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe for more content. And remember, go big boar or go home.